Hello class, so for today, we will discuss about dosage form design, pharmaceutical, and formulation consideration. So first, let's define what is pharmaceutical. It is the study and the formulation, manufacture, stability, and effectiveness of pharmaceutical dosage form. So when we say pharmaceutics, it is simply focusing on the formulation of the different dosage forms. So why is it there is a need for dosage form? First is to protect the drug substance from the destructive influence of atmospheric oxygen or humidity. So we know already that oxygen can cause oxidation and oxidation can hamper the stability of our product. So that is the reason why we are adding coating to tablets for it to be protected against oxygen also the same with our sealed ampules next is to protect the drug substance from the destructive influence of gastric acid after oral administration so acid can neutralize our basic drugs in that sense it can hamper now its stability so that is the reason why for basic tablets we are adding an enteric coating material okay next is to conceal the bitter, salty, or offensive taste or odor of the drug substance. So some patients such as pedias and children are very particular with the bitter taste of this drug. So through formulating dosage forms, adding with sweeteners and flavors, we can create drugs for these special patients not hampering their adherence to the medications. Next is to provide liquid preparations of substances that are either insoluble or unstable in the desired vehicle. So we have substances that should be prepared in liquid dosage form but should not be interact with water. So in this sense, we can use suspensions as our dosage form. Next is to provide clear liquid dosage forms of substances. So this attributed to our syrups and solutions. Another reason is to provide rate controlled drug action which applied in most of our controlled release tablets, capsules, and suspension. So the release of our drugs in these type of dosage forms are controlled. Next is to provide optimal drug action from topical administration sites. So, we have drugs that are only applicable or applied on a certain sites of our body or parts of our body. So, we have dosage forms that we can use for this. So, we have ointments, creams, transdermal patches, ophthalmic, air, and nasal preparations. Another reason is to provide for insertion of the drug into one of the body's orifices. So, example of the dosage form that we can use for insertion in the body parts are our rectal and vaginal suppositories. Next, to provide for placement of drugs directly in the bloodstream or body tissues. So this is attributed to our injections with, which can be given intramuscularly, subcutaneously, or intravenously. Next is to provide for optimal drug action through inhalation therapy. So this is evident in our inhalants and in our aerosols preparations. So what are the factors to consider before formulation of medicine in one or more dosage form? So first to consider is the nature of illness. Second is the site of action, may it be local or systemic action. And another is the age and anticipated conditions of the patient. So for example, if the disease is a chronic such as hypertension, diabetes, which is mostly common in adults. So we can use an oral drug such as capsule or tablets for systemic effects. So pre-formulation studies, before the formulation of the drug substance into a dosage form, it is essential that it can be chemically and physically characterized. Before a drug is formulated into a dosage form, the chemical and the physical characteristics are first identified. So what are the following that are needed to be defined in order for us to know the nature of our drug? So first is the physical description, heat of vaporization, the phase rule, the polymorphism, 
solubility and particle size, dissolution, particle coefficient, microscopic examination, melting point depression, particle size, solubility, solubility and pH, membrane permeability, pKa or the dissociation constant. So, so for further understanding of this different information, please refer to your book and it will also further be discussed in your physical pharmacy subject. So drug stability. So evaluation of physical and chemical stability of pure drug substance is important during pre-formulation study. So we know that a pre-formulation study is part of discovering or in developing drugs. So for us to be able to formulate our drug into a dosage form, one of the thing that we also need to know is the stability of the drugs, both chemically and physically. So when we say stability, it is the extent a product retains within specified limits and through its period of storage and use. So stability studies are conducted to the active ingredients and pharmaceutical excipients. So stability is not only done on the drug or on the active ingredients only, but it is also done in the pharmaceutical excipients. So we have five types of stability. First is chemical, wherein an active ingredient retains its chemical integrity and labeled potency within the specified limits. Another type is the physical, in which the appearance, palatability, uniformity, dissolution, and suspendability are retained in the drug. Other types are microbiologic, which, which refers to the sterility or resistance to microbial growth is retained according to the specified requirements. So some of our drugs uses antimicrobial agents to retain effectiveness within limit. Another type is therapeutic, in which the therapeutic effect remains unchanged, and then toxicologic, wherein no significant increase in toxicity occurs when using the drug. So let's go to the mechanism of degradation. So the most frequently encountered destructive processes are hydrolysis and oxidation. And when we say hydrolysis, it is a solvolysis process in which drug molecules interact with water molecule to yield breakdown products. In short, hydrolysis is more on the interaction of drug with water which breakdowns its components. Next, when we say oxidation, it is a loss of electron from an atom or molecule. So it is frequently considered synonymous with the loss of hydrogen or dehydrogenation from a molecule. Oxidation, by the word itself, is the interaction of oxygen into the drug components, in which, in this sense, the stability of the drug is being affected. So other destructive processes includes the polymerization in which there is a reaction between two or more identified molecules with resultant formation of new and general larger molecule. When you say polymerization, this is the conversion of small molecules into larger molecules. The carboxylation, the composition of carboxylic acid and releasing of the carbon dioxide. You say the, that is the removal of your carbolic acid or the decomposition of your carbolic acid. Next is the amination. This is the removal of your nitrogen containing group from the organic amine. So let's go to Q10 method. This method is used to estimate shelf life for drug product that has been stored or is going to be stored under different set of conditions. So Q10 method is used in pharmacy and manufacturing firm so they use this to estimate the shelf life of the product in usable terms q10 is defined as the ratio of two different reaction rate constants so what are reaction rate constants these are description of the drug concentration with respect to time so in pharmacy the commonly used reaction rates are your first order second order and your zero Order. So later on in your other subjects like in biopharmaceutics and physical pharmacy, this reaction rate will be discussed. Let's go to signs of degradation of specific dosage forms. 
what are the different or the signs of degradations that can be seen in the different dosage forms. First, for tablets, in appearance, degradation includes cracklings, chipping, mottling, friability, hardness, color, odor, moisture content, clumping, disintegration, and dissolution. Some of the terms such as the crackling, shaping, and mottling will be further discussed in the next chapters. Next are the capsules. What are the signs of degradation? It includes moisture tackiness, color, appearance, shape, brittleness, and dissolution. Next, for oral solution or suspension, appearance, precipitation, pH, color, odor, redispersibility, in terms of suspensions, and clarity for solutions. For oral powders, includes appearance, color, odor, and moisture. For meter dose inhalation aerosols, deliver dose per actuation, number of meter doses, color, particle size, distribution, loss of propellant, pressure, valve corrosion, spray pattern, and absence of pathogenic microorganisms. In discussions about aerosols, we will further discuss the different parts of meter dose inhalers and the different types of propellants. Next are the topical non metered aerosols. Degradations include appearance, odor, pressure, weight loss, net weight dispense, delivery rate, and the spray patterns. For topical creams, ointment, lotions, solutions, and gels, signs of degradations are seen in its appearance, colors, homogeneity, odor, pH, resuspendability, consistency, particle size distribution, strength, and weight loss. For ophthalmic and nasal and oral inhalation preparation, signs of degradations are seen in its appearance, color, consistency, pH, clarity, and solutions, particle size and resuspendability and suspensions and ointments, strengths and sterility. For small volume parenterals, signs of degradations are seen in the appearance, color, particle matter, dispersibility and suspensions, pH, sterility, pyrogenicity, and closure integrity. For large volume parenteral, signs of degradations are common with small volume parenterals. In addition to it, our volume and extractables when plastic containers are used. For suppositories, signs of degradations include softening range, appearance, and melting. And for emulsion, it includes the appearance such as the phase separation, the color, other pH, and viscosity. When it comes to controlled release membrane drug delivery systems, signs of degradations includes seal strength of the drug reservoir, decomposition products, membrane integrity, drug strength, and drug release rate. So we have here a USP guidelines on stability of extemporaneous compounded formulation. So according to the guidelines, non-aqueous liquids in solid formulations in which manufactured drug is the source of active ingredients not later than 25% of the time remaining until the product's expiration date or 6 months. So what does it mean? So for all non-aqueous liquids, so if it is a liquid preparation just as long the solvent is not water and all solid formulations, the stability of it should be 25% of the time remaining until the expiration date. Like for example, the time remaining until the expiration date is 10 months. So meaning its stability is only 2.5, 2.5 months or 6 months. Another guidelines for non-aqueous liquids in solid formulations in which a USP or NF substances is the source of active ingredient a beyond use date of 6 months. So, if non-aqueous liquids or solid for formulations are from USP or from NF or National Formulary, the stability of that preparation is 6 months. Another guidelines for water containing formulation prepared from ingredients in solid form, 
a beyond use date not later than 14 days in storage at cold temperatures. So, if the preparation contains water, the stability is only within 14 days if it is stored in the cold temperature or in the refrigerator. However, according to our current practice, if it is not stored in the refrigerator, then stability is only 7 days. For all other formulations, a beyond use date of the intended duration of therapy or 30 days, whichever is earlier. So, for other preparations, the stability is only 30 days. Oral aqueous liquid preparation made from a tablet or capsule formulation, pharmacists should make up only 14 days supply. So, as a pharmacist, if we are preparing oral aqueous liquid preparation, see to it that we will prepare these drugs or this preparation and give a 14 day supply only for our patients and it should be stored in a refrigerator with cold temperature so medication must be dispensed in a container conducive to stability and patient must be advised of the proper method of use and conditions of storage of the medication so of course this medication dispense should be stored in a container which retain or maintain its stability and the patient should also be advised about its use and how the drug should be stored. Pharmaceutical ingredients and excipients. It is required to produce a drug substance in a final dosage form. Of course, if we don't have pharmaceutical ingredients or excipients, then we cannot create a dosage form. Always remember, Pharmaceutical ingredients and excipients are non-medicinal component of our drug. So, the medicinal component is called as active pharmaceutical ingredients. So, for each dosage form, the pharmaceutical ingredients establish the primary features of the product and contribute to the physical form, texture, stability, taste, and overall appearance. So, this is the purpose of our pharmaceutical Excipient. So, for the primary features and of course, for the physical form, texture, stability, taste, and overall appearance of the drug product. So, what are the different types of pharmaceutical excipients? We have the acidifying agents. So, it is used in liquid preparation to provide acidic medium for product stability. So, all the acids are its examples. Next, alkalinizing agent used in liquid preparation to provide alkaline medium for product stability. So, posted are the given examples. Next, for adsorbent, an agent capable of holding other molecules onto its surface by physical or chemical means. So, when we say adsorbent, um, this agent hold the molecules in its surface. So, examples are cellulose and activated charcoal. For aerosol propellant, agent responsible for developing pressure within an aerosol container and expelling the product when the valve is open. So, aerosol propellants includes your gases and your chlorofluorocarbons. Next, air displacement. Agent employed to displace air in the hermetically sealed container to enhance product stability. Air used for displacement are your nitrogen and carbon dioxide. Antifungal preservative. Used in a liquid and semi-solid preparation to prevent growth of fungi. Effectiveness of parabens is usually enhanced by the use in combination. So, usually, our antifungal preservatives are parabens. Antimicrobial preservative. Used in liquid and semi-solid preparation to prevent growth of microorganisms. It includes our benzalconium chloride. Antioxidant naman, it is used to prevent deterioration of preparation by oxidation. So, it prevents oxygen from entering our drug or in short, prevents oxidation. So, examples are the following. Next, for our buffering agents, it is used to resist change in pH upon dilution or addition of acid or alkali. Again, buffering agent maintains the pH. So, the following are examples. The chelating agents, substance that forms stable water-soluble complexes or chelates with metals, 
used in some liquid pharmaceuticals as stabilizers to complex heavy metals that might promote instability. In such use, they are also called as sequestering agents. So our chelating agents are those substances that forms chelates with metals. They are also known as sequestering agents. Examples are edetic acids and your EDTA. Colorants. So they are used to impart color to liquid and solid preparation. So the following are examples. So as you can see, may mga code siya nga FD and C. D and C. When we say FD and C, that is food, drug, and cosmetic. So that colorant can be used for food, drug, and cosmetic. D and C meaning that colorant is used for drug and cosmetics only. Clarifying agent, they are used as filtering aid for its absorbent quality. So, example is bentonite. Calcifying agent are used to promote and maintain dispersion of finely subdivided particles of liquid in a vehicle in which it is immiscible. End product may be a liquid emulsion or semi-solid emulsion. So, these emulsifying agents maintain the stability of our emulsions. So, examples are the following. Next, for encapsulating agent, use to form thin shells to enclose a drug for ease of administration. So, these are the empty gelatin shells that we have. Flavorant, used to impart a pleasant flavor and often odor to a preparation. In addition to the natural flavorants listed, many synthetic ones are used. So, the following are examples of our flavorants. Humectants used to prevent drying of preparation particularly in ointments and cream so these humic tans maintain the moisture content of the preparation such as our ointments and creams so examples are the following for levigating agents these are liquid used as an intervening agent to reduce the particle size of the powder by grinding usually in a mortar so levigating agent facilitates the reduction of the particle size of our powders. Ointment base, semi solid vehicle for medicated ointment. So, for ointment base, we have different types of ointment base. So, soon we will discuss them in our next chapters. Plasticizers, component of film coating solutions to make film more pliable, enhance spread of coat over tablets, beads, and granules. Plasticizers are commonly used for our film coating tablets. Solvents. They are used to dissolve another substance and preparation of a solution may be aqueous or not. So in short, solvents, these are vehicle that we use to dissolve our product. So we also have another term, the cold solvent, such as water and alcohol and water and glycerin may be used when needed. Sterile solvents are used in certain preparations such as in injection. So the following are examples of our solvents. It could be either aqueous, oleaginous, and hydroalcoholic. Okay. The stiffening agents. So they are used to increase thickness or hardness of the preparation, usually in ointment. So the following are examples. Next, suppository base. Vehicle for suppositories. Samples are the cocoa, butter, your peg mixtures. Next, surfactants. They are the surface active agents, substances that absorb to surfaces or interfaces to reduce surface or interfacial tension. May be used as sweating agents, detergents, or emulsifying agents. So it, they could be interchangeably used. So examples are the following. For the suspending agent, viscosity increasing agent used to reduce sedimentation rate of particles in a vehicle in which they are not soluble. So suspension may be formulated for oral, parenteral, ophthalmic, topical, or other route. Suspending agents are used for suspension. So they maintain the stability of our suspension. So examples are the following. For sweetening agents, used to impart sweetness to a preparation. For tablet anti-adherence, prevent tablet ingredients from sticking to punches and dyes during production. So, tablet adherence are used in production of our tablets. So, example is the magnesium stearate. Tablet binder, substances used to cause adhesion of powder 
particles and tablet granulation. So, the following are examples. For tablet and capsule diluentaman, they are inert filler to create desired bulk for flow properties and compression characteristic of tablets and capsules. So, in short, they are the fillers of our capsules and our tablets. So, the following are examples. For tablet coating agent, they are used to coat a tablet to protect against decomposition by atmospheric oxygen or humidity to provide a desired release pattern to mask taste or odor or for aesthetic purposes. So, coating may be sugar, film, or thick covering around a tablet. So, we have different types of coating. We have sugar coating, film coating, and terry coating, and the like. So, sugar-coated tablets generally start to break up in the stomach film forms a thin cover around a form tablet or bed unless it is enteric film dissolves in the stomach so enteric coating the man passes through the stomach to break up in the intestine some water insoluble coatings include ethyl cellulose which are used to slow the release of drug in the gastrointestinal tract so examples of materials used for sugar coating for film coating and enteric coating are the following. Next are tablet direct compression excipients. So they are used in the recompression tablet formulation. So they are used in order for our tablet to be compressed. Okay, examples are the basic calcium phosphate or dieta. Tablet disintegrant. They are used in solid forms to promote disruption of the mass into smaller particles more readily dispersed or Dissolve. So, the following are examples. Tab tablet Glidan. Use in tablet and capsule formulation to improve flow properties of the powder mix. So, Glidans improve the flow property of the powder. So, examples are the following. For tablet lubricant, they are used in tablet formulation to reduce friction during tablet compression. So, lubricants are used to reduce the friction. So, the following are example. For tablet or capsule opaque one, they are used to render a coating opaque, may be used alone or with colorant. Example of that is the titanium dioxide. Tablet polishing agent, this is used to impart an attractive sheen to coated tablets. Tonicity agent, they are used to render solutions similar in osmotic dextrose characteristic to physiologic fluids. So example, in ophthalmic, parenteral, and irrigation fluids. This tonicity agents renders the pressure. It can be isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic solvents. For vehicle, carrying agent used in formulating a variety of liquids for oral and parenteral administration. Generally, oral liquids are aqueous, example in syrups, or hydroalcoholic like the elixirs. So, solutions for intravenous use are aqueous, whereas intramuscular injections may be aqueous or illaginous. If it's intravenous injection, aqueous ang solvent. If it's intramuscular, then oleaginous ang vehicle ginagamit. So, flavored and sweetened, so they are our preparations which are added as flavor and sweeteners. So, oleaginous vehicle naman, corn oil, mineral oil, peanut oil, sesame oil. For sterile, we have the bacteriostatic sodium chloride injection. Viscosity increasing agent, they are used to render preparations more resistant to flow. They are used in suspensions to deter sedimentation in ophthalmic solutions to enhance contact time to thicken topical Cream. So, ang use ng aton nga viscosity increasing agent, they increase the viscosity to increase the contact time of the drug to surfaces of the body. So, examples are the following. Now, let's talk about preservative. Liquid and semi-solid preparation must be preserved against microbial contamination. These preparations provide excellent growth media for microbes are mostly aqueous preparations, especially syrups, emotions, suspensions, and some semi-solid preparation, particularly our cream. So, always remember, all preparations containing water is subjected to microbial growth. So, in this sense, preservatives are added to maintain their aseptic condition 
throughout storage and use. So the following are preservatives. So they interfere with microbial growth, multiplication, and metabolism using different mechanisms. So for benzoic acid, boric acid, para hydroxybenzoates, the mode of action is by denaturation of proteins of microorganisms. Phenols and chlorinated phenolic compounds, they cause lytic and denaturation action on cytoplasmic membranes for chlorinated preservatives, also by oxidation of the enzymes of the microorganism. Next, for alcohols, they cause lytic and denaturation action on membranes of microorganism. For quaternary compounds such as your benzoconium chloride, they cause lytic action on membranes of the microorganism and for mercurials, they cause denaturation of enzymes by combining with the thiol or the SH groups of your microorganisms. So here are the examples of preservatives commonly employed in the pharmaceutical preparations. We have your benzoic acid and its strength, so 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 percent, sodium benzoate 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 percent, alcohol 15 to 20 percent, phenylmercuric nitrate and acetate 0 0.002 percent to 0 0.01 percent, phenol 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 percent, same also with crisol. Your chlorobutanol is 0.5%, benzylconium chloride 0.002% to 0.01%, and combinations of your methyl parabene and propyl parabene 0.1% to 0.2%. So parabenes are good against fungus. So, so that's all about pharmaceuticals and formulation considerations. Thank you.